Phase three. Small differential signal. And a small differential signal, as we mentioned, is anything that is smaller approximately uh, than half of the thermal voltage. So for room temperature, around 12.5 millivolts. All right, in that case, um, we're going to have a small increase. Let's imagine that we are analyzing the case where uh, V in 1 becomes slightly smaller than V in 2 by an amount less than 50 halves. So there's a small increase in V in 1 uh, with respect to V in 2. And what that causes, again, since the emitter voltages are tied together, a small increase in the base voltage of transistor Q1 uh, produces a small increase in VBE, and that small increase in VBE is going to produce a small increase in the collector current through transistor Q1, since they are related by the Shockley equation. Um, IC is equal to, or approximately equal to, uh, I as the saturation current times E to the VBE over VT. Um, so a small increase in V in 1 with respect to V in 2 produces um, a small increase in the collector current IC1. By how much? Well, IC1 is going to have um, its quiescent value of half of the tail current, I have that has when both signals are sitting at the same at the same level, both input signals. Now, if I increase IC one slightly, uh, this current I have is going to increase by an amount small delta IC, and that's going to be the small signal IC. Is that that delta that small increase? And so we're going to rewrite it as I halves plus. And I don't know if you can perceive this, hopefully you can, but this will be plus IC, and this is lowercase i, lowercase subscript. This is the small signal IC, or in other words, the delta. Now, since we know that IC1 plus IC2 must be equal to I, uh, because of the law of conservation of, um, of charge, and the law of conservation um, of matter, we will have um, the overall current I, and now we have a small, we have I halves through each branch. Now, if the current through one branch increases by a small amount, then the current through the other branch must decrease by the same small amount so that the overall current remains the same. Um, and so we have uh, all right. Part of the same line since it's a direct consequence. Therefore, IC2 must be equal to the I halves minus the same delta IC, which is I halves minus small signal IC. All right. Um, and since that delta IC is essentially a function of the input signal, the, the differential um, input signal that we have applied at the base or between the bases of the transistors, that means we can use this circuit as an amplifier because we can see that the, um, the output current and therefore the output voltage is going to be proportional to um, the differential input signal. So. Basically, we can write, you know, uh, VC1 is going to be equal to, it's going to be uh, VCC minus the current flowing through the resistor times the resistance. Now, the current flowing through the resistor um, used to be I halves, but now has increased by an amount delta IC. So, I halves plus little IC. I'll keep it as delta IC so that nobody gets confused, times RC, and VC2 
equals VCC minus I halves minus delta IC times RC. So we can see that the output voltage, which is VC1 minus VC2, and the terms VCC minus I halves times RC are going to cancel, and so we're going to be left with um, 2, delta RC, uh, 2 delta ICs times RC. And again, this is important because we can see the output voltage is proportional to uh, that delta IC. So V out proportional to, I'm going to delta IC. And the delta IC in itself is proportional to uh, the small differential signal VID. Therefore, we have um, the circuit can be used as an amplifier. So, output voltage proportional to differential input voltage. The circuit can be used as a differential voltage amplifier in this mode of operation, meaning for small differential input signals. And as we have seen, um, it's going to have an output that is proportional to the differential signal, but also, as we saw in case one, uh, its common mode gain is going to be ideally equal to zero. So it gives us um, a circuit with good characteristics to create a differential voltage amplifier. One of the things that we could draw here is just put together quickly a graphical uh, representation of this result, which basically means if I have my V in 1 and my V in 2, plotted with respect to time, um, Let's imagine that I'm representing a small differential input signal. So when being one increases, being two decreases, and so forth. Keeping it symmetrical, then my output signal, my output voltage, so this is going to be VC1 minus VC2. It's going to be something like this. Uh, so basically proportional to the change uh, to the differential input signal V in 1 uh, minus V in 2. Uh, one other thing that is worth mentioning, uh, we talked about differential amplifiers um, being able to have a balanced output or a single-ended output. In this case, if you will have very clearly a balanced or differential output, the output is the difference between the two collector voltages. Um, the same version of the, or, uh, the single-ended version, we should say, of the differential pair will look as follows. We will still have the two transistors, Q1 and Q2. Still connected in the emitters. And in this case, um, we typically will be taking the output out of our V2. And so over there, we're going to put an RC resistor. Typically, we wouldn't put it um, in Q1. The reason for that is because we are not taking the output voltage there, so we don't need uh, to generate a voltage drop. This will still be V1, V2. Now this will be our output, V out. And so this would be um, the differential pair. This will be with balanced output.
and this will be a single ended output div pair. And we're going to be looking at the characteristics of both um, and also trying to compare the characteristics of both. Um, how do they compare in terms of um, common mode gain, differential gain, um, as well as common mode rejection ratio? Thank you.